So friends, here we have a question on scoreboarding. Write the steps of execution with scoreboard approach. The following set of MIPS instruction is going to be executed in a pipeline system. Instruction set is given. The latencies of integer unit is 1 cycle. Floating point adder unit is 2 cycle. Floating point multiplier is 10 cycle. And floating point divider unit is 40 cycles. Now first of all we construct instruction status, functional unit status and res register result status. In the instruction status we have instruction set and four, uh, four stages issue, read or prints, execute and write back in which our instruction can be. In functional unit status we have functional unit. We know in scoreboard we have one integer unit, two multiplier unit, one adder unit and one divider unit. Then there are uh, fields, busy field, operation field, destination register field, source register fields, FJ and FK. Then we have QJ and QK fields representing the functional units which are going to produce our source registers. Then we have RJ, RK fields. These are the flags representing whether our source registers are present or not. In register result status, we have functional unit that is going to write the register. Now, in clock cycle number 1, the first load instruction will be issued. So this integer unit will be now busy. The operation to perform is load. The destination register is F6 and the source register is R2. Since this source register is available, the flag representing R2 will be yes. Now this integer unit is going to write F6, so we represent here. Now in the second cycle, this instruction can read its operand because its operands are available. But in the second cycle, we cannot issue this second load instruction because integer unit is already busy. So to avoid a structural hazard, we cannot issue this second load instruction. Now the latency of integer unit is one cycle. So this load instruction completes its execution after a third clock cycle and after fourth clock cycle it completes its write back stage. So after fourth clock cycle the integer unit write the result in F6 and the integer unit will become free. Now in fifth clock cycle we can issue second load instruction. So the integer unit will become busy. The operation is load. Destination register is F2. Source register is R3. Since R3 is present, flag indicating FK will be yes. Now this integer unit is going to write R2, F2. So we represent it in the register result status. In the 6th clock cycle, we can read operands of uh, second instruction. Also in the 6th clock cycle, this MUL instruction can be issued. So MUL1 will be now busy. Operation to perform is multiplication. Destination register is F0. Source registers are F2 and F4. Now F2 is not yet present, it will be present when integer unit write the results in F2. So F2 waits for integer unit to write the result. Since F2 is not yet present, the flag, represent, uh, flag for Fj will be no. Since F4 is present, the flag for Fk will be yes. Now this MULT instruction is going to write F2, F0. So, MULT1 is going to write F0. Now in the 7 clock cycle, um, execution of a second load instruction completes and also we can issue this subtract instruction. So add a unit will be now busy. The operation to perform is subtract. Destination register is F8 and source registers are F6 and F2. Now 
no f6 is available but f2 wait for integer unit so f6 f6 is available so flag represent yes and for f2 the flag represent no now in the also this f8 will be written by add unit add a unit now in the 8th clock cycle it write back the result so in the 8th clock cycle this integer unit write back the result and become free so the instructions waiting for f2 need not to wait because f2 is now available they need not to wait for this integer unit now in the 8th clock cycle this divide instruction is issued also so in the 8th clock cycle this divide instruction will be issued so divider will become busy the operation to perform is divide um, this destination register is f10 and source registers are f0 and f6 now f0 will be produced by mult1 functional unit f6 is available the flag represent no for f0 and yes for f6 because f0 is not yet available and f6 is available yet now this divider unit is going to write f10 now this mul and sub instruction which are which were waiting for f2 so since f2 are available now both instruction can read their operands so in the 9 clock cycle this mul and sub instruction can read the operands also we check whether we can issue this add instruction in the 9 clock cycle or not since the add new unit is busy so to avoid structural hazard we cannot issue this add instruction now this sub instruction take two cycles for execution so its execution will be completed after clock cycle 11 and it write the result after clock cycle 12 so after clock cycle 12 add a unit will write the result in f8 and hence this add a unit will be now free since this add a unit is now free in the 13 clock cycle we can issue this add instruction now add a unit is busy the operation to perform is add destination register is f6 source registers are f8 and f2 now both f8 and f2 are present now this add a unit is going to write f6 since both operands are available in the 14th cycle we can perform the read operand of this add instruction and it completes its execution stage after 16th clock cycle because it takes two cycle for execution now for writing back we have to check for war that is right after read hazard since between add and divide instruction there is war hazard for f6 we will not write the result of add instruction until this divide instruction read its operand f6 so divide is now waiting for mul functional unit to produce the value of f0 so that it can read its both operands now 
the execution of mul instruction will be completed after clock cycle 19 because mul instruction take 10 cycles to complete execution after 20th cycle the mul instruction write back its result so this mul1 function unit write back the result in f0 so f0 will be now available and need not to wait for mul instruction in the 21st clock cycle this divide instruction can now read it up its operands because they are now available since divide instruction has read its operands the add instruction can write back its result in the 22nd clock cycle hence the add unit write the result in f6 and now it will become free also this is free now this divide instruction take 40 cycles to execute so divide instruction complete its execution after clock cycle 61 and write back its result after clock cycle number 62 so after 60 second clock cycle this divider unit write its result in f10 and become free so these are the complete steps for this problem so that's all for this video we will discuss thomas illo's algorithm in next video thank you